Well, we are here at the 10th Snapdragon Summit. I am uh, pleased to be a guest of Qualcomm again here. Uh, and I'm here with Durga Malati. We're going to talk about all things AI. So maybe just walk us through, I, I like vision statements, right? Maybe just walk us through sort of the grand updated vision statement in terms of how you think about AI. And again, also across the, the Qualcomm stack. So AI is now... Uh becoming more and more mainstream uh, in devices. And so from a big picture standpoint, it's permeating practically every single kind of a device that we can think of, going from doorbells through uh, uh, PCs, uh, XR devices, uh, smartphones, uh, industrial and consumer IoT wearables, and all the way into automotive. So it's a pretty big, diverse set of products in which AI is permeating. But I think the big picture view is we are gradually transitioning from just the ability to run large generative AI models on devices into building applications and agents on top of it mm. and trying to blend in the right kind of a complementary view of AI running between devices and all the way into the cloud and data centers. So you talk a little bit about timeline and I've sort of used this example, so I'm curious right, if you agree. Um, it feels like, you know, we're what, we're three years-ish, right, in from, from the chat GPT moment. Um, and it feels like it moves fast, but it also doesn't move fast because we don't have sort of wide stream adoption, right? In either consumer or enterprise context. We have people doing interesting things regularly, but this isn't necessarily, you know, a daily length of habit. So just in terms of, I guess, how you see more of this, right, b being adopted. And then what are, those, what are those key drivers, right, that you guys are tackling technologically to keep the advancement of this and the wider adoption of AI? I think in terms of the adoption of AI, there's two ways of looking at it. One is the uh, productivity enhancement that we are beginning to see. Enterprises are clearly transitioning into usage of AI for their own productivity increase in one way or the other. Code generation is something that's been firmly adopted by practically every software organization out there. It's almost... Uh, 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 you know, it's 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 actually the right thing to say when we see something like 20% of the code that's actually getting generated now increasingly, uh, people and employees end up using generative AI tools to do that. It's not visible externally because it's one of those productivity tools. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't come across as like a massive thing, but it is an important step already that's happening, productivity. I think from a consumer space, uh, we saw the initial glimpses of that with uh, more sophisticated image editing and making sure that, uh, you know, the pictures and the videos that we take are, are extremely compelling, modifying them just in right. the right way. But we do see uh, uh, voice assistance and especially AI assistance now starting to scratch the surface of what they can be. We've gone on the record by saying that AI is becoming the new UI mm. to, uh, between a human and uh, their devices around them but we are just at the inflection point over there. We haven't seen that yet happen, but there's lots of work that's going on behind the scenes on that. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. Mm. Yeah, and I think there's a there's sort of an important breakthrough, right, in terms of we still have, you know, like you said, right, AI has largely been behind the scenes, right? It's been doing image visualization. Yeah. It's not obvious, right, to the customer. And now we have two ways that that manifests, something like a chatbot, and then to some degree, even just write the role of agentic. So maybe just talk about those two things. And then again, what kind of your expectations are for on-device, right, compute, what you guys are doing there, and then the role that maybe the cloud plays in some of those environments as well. So agent, so first of all, uh, there's no one single agent per device. There's like several agents. And we think of agents as uh, uh, it's, it's a way of breaking down extremely complex tasks mm. and then actually making things happen. And so, for instance, you might actually pull out uh, uh, a financial spreadsheet or something else and you open up a finance agent and that does things for you uh, based upon what you converse over there. Uh, you might have some other enterprise application on which there is an agent that's running all that. But in all cases, if you kind of think about it, it almost takes the act of uh, running some inference on a generative AI model for granted. That's like baseline. So you've got to be able to do that. But what's more important is the ability to interface into these kinds of documents and any other data that's out there, which is not necessarily available externally mm. just in the public internet, but it's something that's far more personal. Maybe it's like secure in terms of your enterprise data and so on, but you're actually working on that. 
And there is a personalization aspect that comes in implicitly with these agents that are running. I think there is a gradual transition from going from apps towards agents that we are beginning to see now. And I think in the next few months, more device OEMs and uh, PC OEMs will start talking about agents. Now on the next part in terms of uh, the interplay between devices and the cloud, uh, the more recent models nowadays have uh, a split way of actually operating. For example, if you have like a reasoning model and you ask a question to it, you can get a very quick response, which is very quick and you just immediately get some answer, or you can get a far more well thought out, complex reason-based response. This sort of a split processing, it started off with a couple of pretty high profile model makers, but it's becoming mainstream. And what that means is you might want to then run this uh, uh, immediately, uh, the immediate response or the quick response directly on the device, and the more complex response can then run on the cloud. Bottom line, it's not either or. It's not like you can either run on the device or run on the cloud, but you actually do complement on both sides. And so whenever possible, you can run it on the device, but on the other hand, if you have excellent connectivity, by all means, run it on the cloud. Right. How do you think about the orchestration layer of that? I know you know, Alex has presented sort of a large bit vision around personal AI and what that means. So maybe just a little bit more on what does that mean? And then even architecturally, how does that manifest itself on, on your devices? The orchestration layer is some sort of a bedrock for any kind of an agent, because that's what the agents actually depend upon. So for instance, when it comes to personalization, you have to tap into some personal knowledge, have some sort of a memory, and make sure that you have enough of a rich history out there to tap into and say, this is what I think the task actually really means. It's not just about all the data that you have on the device, but it's actually remembering your preferences, your style, what is it that you, uh, uh, that you need. And that can go from enterprises to consumers. So that's where actually a lot of the work is going on. Now, we have a couple of partners who have fully embraced this. And in fact, they're building their own orchestration layer based upon our platforms. And that I think is going to be the next step as we see a large number of third party agents and applications with their own orchestration layer that's built on the platforms that we have. As Qualcomm, we provide our orchestration layer itself. So any partner of ours can cherry pick specific components from it and then build on top. Mm. So in la last question, in terms of like why we keep pushing right architectural innovation year over year, right? And this could be anything from phones to PCs to you know what we want in, in mixed reality or, or, or AR. Uh, what are some of those things that this year, right, you see as clear enablers of some of the th these things that we're talking about architecturally on these products? I think the combination of uh, uh, agents and orchestration from third parties for the first time in this uh, summit. Uh, we're not just talking about the capabilities of the platform by ourselves, but we've brought in like a much larger ecosystem showcasing what they're building on top of our platforms. Mm. I think that's going to be like a different way of looking at it, truly bringing in the emergence of these applications and agents on our platforms. Mm. Cool. Well, we're excited to see what comes when people build more on, uh, on Snapdragon. So thanks for your time. Thanks for having me.